Hey guys, it's Sam here from Song 101 and in this video we're going to be looking at how to play Stuck With You by Ariana Grande and Justin Bieber. It's a great one to learn if you're new to the guitar because it uses relatively simple open chords. So we're going to start with that and a nice basic strum pattern. Um, so if you're a singer it'll be nice and easy to sing along. And then we're going to work it up to something a little bit more advanced, a little bit more interesting uh, if you feel ready for it. Let's go. Okay, so we're going to start by taking our capo and putting it on the first fret. And the first chord we've got is G major. And the way we're going to play this, to make sure everything is a little bit easier later on to, ch to change the chords, is by playing this one with the two fingers on the top strings. So we've got third fret, second fret, open, open, third fret, third fret. So that's G major. Okay, the next chord we want is B minor seven. So to get to that, we're just gonna take our middle finger off and put it on the second fret of the G string and also remove your pinky from that third fret. So now we've got B minor seven. You don't play the E string. Play the second fret on the A, open, second fret on the G, third fret on the B, and then we don't play the high E either. So it's just the middle four strings. So that's our second chord, B minor seven. Third one is C add nine. So again, from this chord, from B minor seven, we're gonna lift off our second finger, middle finger, and put it on the third fret of the A string. First finger comes off onto the second fret of the D string and then pinky onto the third fret of the high E string. So we get, don't play the E string, play the third fret of the A, then second, then open, then third, then third again. So that's C add nine. Okay, from there we're gonna to move to an E minor seven chord. And to do this, we're gonna keep these two fingers on the top strings on the B and the E strings, keep them where they are. Um, we're gonna move these two, take them off, and put them on the A string second fret and D string second fret. So it's like an E minor with the top two strings on as well. So we've got open, second, second, open, third, third. So that's E minor seven. And then finally, our last chord is D major. So we're gonna leave our ring finger where it is, this one. Everything else can come off. And we're gonna put the middle finger on the second fret of the high E string and index on the second fret of the G string. And then we play four strings for this one. So it's open D, then second fret of the G, third fret of the B, and second fret of the E string. So that gives us a D major chord. Okay, that's all our chords. Now we can get to the strum pattern. So the easiest way of playing this, if you just want something simple to sing along to, is just to do continuous down strokes. Just down all the way through. Uh, we're in six, eight timing, which means there are six beats in every bar. So we're gonna start with this G chord and just count up to six with each down stroke. So we're gonna go. One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 Just start to speed it up a little bit. So you might be able to hear that I'm actually accenting some of the notes, which means I'm I'm playing them just a little bit loud, I'm strumming through a little bit more. Uh, in 6-8 timing, the accents are usually on beats 1 and beats 4. So that's what I'm doing here, I'm just playing them a little bit louder. So take a listen to this, I'm going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4. Just playing a little bit louder on beats 1 and 4. And that gives us that 6-8 timing kind of feel. Okay, so once you've got the strum pattern and the accents down, we can move on to changing the chords. So remember, we started with G, 
and we're going to have two bars worth of G, meaning we go through the strum pattern twice for a total of 12 downstrokes. So let's just count our way through that. We're going one, two, three, four, five, six, two, two, three, four, five, six. At that point, we're going to change chords to the B minor seven chord. So that was this one. And just try and hit the middle four strings for this because we don't want any any muddiness in that low E note, that low E string. So again, two bars of this, so 12 counts. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then on to C, add nine, which was this one. Um, again, two bars, so one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then the last two chords, it's half as much time, so we only have one bar of each, meaning there are six drums for each chord. So we've got E minor seven for six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then D major for six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we'll do the whole thing again, that's the whole sequence, and just piece it together. That's the majority of the song. So we're gonna go G for two bars, B minor seven for two bars, C add nine for two bars, and then E minor and D for a bar each. Here we go. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then the whole thing repeats again. So on. Okay, so once you're comfortable with that, you obviously want to try and speed it up a little bit. So let's give that a quick go. The tempo of the song is a bit more like. Um... And then round again. Okay, so that is 90% of the song. That is the verse chord progression. It's the pre-chorus, it's the chorus. The only bit where the chord progression changes is the middle eight section or the bridge as it's sometimes called. Um, this is where the lyrics go something like, I've got you on my mind, come and take all my time, something like that. Um, here we're gonna start with a C chord this time. So we're, again, we're gonna play the C add nine to keep the changes nice and straightforward. So it was this chord here, C add nine. We're going to do that for two bars. So again, the count of 12, we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Then we're going to change to a G chord for two bars. So one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Back to C for two bars again. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then D for two bars. One, two, three. Okay, so after the bridge section, we are back into the original chord progression for a final chorus. And that will get us through the entire song. They're all the chords we need. So if you're a singer and you just want to strum along, this is a really nice, easy way of doing that once you've got the strum pattern and the open chords down. However, if you want to take your guitar playing a little bit further, there's some things we can do to make it a bit more interesting. So let's take a look at them. So for this song, personally, I would add some finger picking to it to make the strings sing out a little bit and differentiate it from just strumming your way through every single section. So something a little bit like this. This is exactly the same chords. Something like that. For the verse sections, I think it's going to make it stand out a little bit more and then you might go to the strumming for the chorus, just to uh, differentiate them. Okay, let's break down how we do this then. So as I say, the chords are the same, so we're going to start with the open G chord, again with the capo on the first fret. Uh, I've put my pick down, I'm using my fingers. Now the general rules of finger picking are your thumb is going to take the lowest note in the chord and your next three fingers are going to take a string each and your pinky 
you can kind of forget about your pinky. Some people like to plant it on the on the body of the guitar. I think I do this quite a bit. Um, but whatever feels comfortable to you, um, the pinky's not so important for finger picking. Okay, so we're on a G chord. The thumb is going to take the lowest note, so that's on the E string. That's your root note. Index is going to take the D string. The middle finger takes the G string. And the ring finger takes the B string. And we forget about the pinky. Okay, so we have the, the picking pattern that I was using there is going to be thumb, index, middle, ring. So we've just gone thumb, index, middle, ring on each of their assigned strings. And then we're going to come back down the picking pattern. So we've got thumb, index, middle, ring, and then back down. So we've got middle, index, and then we start again. So thumb, index, middle, ring, middle, index start again. So we get this pattern. So it's a really basic finger picking pattern but if you are new to this this is going to take some time to get your finger dexterity up in your picking hand. Okay so when we move chords remember the next one was B minor 7 we need to move our picking hand slightly. So the thumb is going to take the lowest note, which is now on the A string. It's that B note here. So we've got A, and then these three fingers are going to stay on their same strings. So we've got A string, D string, G string, and B string, and then back down. So same pattern. Then we're going to change chords again to C, uh, sorry, C add 9, so that's this one. And your fingers just stay on the, exactly the same strings, so we go. And for each of these chords, we're going twice through the picking pattern because it's two bars for each chord, until we get to E minor. So E minor, played as E minor 7 with these top two on here. Thumb is going to go on the low E string. And these three fingers, again, stay where they are for now. So we've got, this was the D string, the G string, and the B string. So let's play through that for one bar. And then finally, we have a D chord. Now this is different because it's only four strings, the D chord. So uh, D was like this, remember? Thumb is going to take the D string. And then these three fingers are going to shift down a string. So they're now on, well that's G, that's B, and that's your high E. So the highest four strings, and we just pick through the pattern. Okay, and then we repeat the whole thing again. Remember that was one bar on the D. So let's run through the entire progression, starting with G for two bars. So here we go. Then B minor seven. C add 9, E minor 7, and D. Back to G. Okay, let's speed it up a bit. And that's one way we can make this a little bit more interesting instead of just strumming the way through every single section. So as I say, you might start by picking the verses and then strumming in the choruses. And it'll just make you stand out a little bit more if you're doing open mics or gigs or anything. Uh, just separate you, separate you from the crowd a little bit. Now for those of you that want to take this one step further, what I think is really cool in this song is to add a little bit of percussion, a little bit of a slapping on the strings. I mean, especially if you're playing electric like I am and you have a load of reverb on. Um, I really like that sound. It just adds that depth of space and um, rhythm to it. So yeah, check this out. So 
So yeah, as you can hear, that reverb is just filling out that space. And in terms of picking, all that I'm doing is, it's exactly the same as what we did before, but instead of picking with the ring finger on beat four, so before we had that note there, instead of playing that, what I'm doing is strumming the strings with my fingernails in this downward kind of motion. And at the same time, I'm using my thumb, the side of my thumb, to slap um, the thick E string, the thickest E string, against the frets. So we get that, that percussive, percussive kind of sound. So yeah, I strike down with the fingers and then slap with the thumb at the same time. So. And if we do that with a chord, we get that, that percussion kind of sound coming through. So yeah, again, that was beats one, two, three, the same. So we have thumb, index, middle, slap. One, two, three, slap. One, two, three, slap. One, two, three, slap. One, two, three, slap. One, two, change chords, same pattern. And that's it, we're resting beats five and six. If you want to, you can play on beat six to add in a little bit of motion in the bass. So again, if I play this for you. So all I was really doing there is just playing the root note again on beat six and resting beat five. Just adds a little bit more motion. And yet, instead of now just strumming all the way through the song, we've got something a little bit more interesting. It just adds a lot of uh, dynamic to your playing. And that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. Let me know in the comments what you want me to cover next week. Whilst you're down there, give me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and then you can keep up to date with everything we do here at Song 101. Take care, guys. See you next week.